Barbecue Central Show, let's go. The number one barbecue show on the low. Your host, Greg Rampy, the grilling master, spreading the info, getting to you faster, asking tough questions and having a blast. The Barbecue Central Show is here at last. The best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. Come on, let's go. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. I'm your host, John Solberg. Today, both segments dedicated to a great guest, Josh Carey of Yoder Smokers. Josh gives us the rundown on the company and the smokers. A lot of great information. If you're all about stick burners or you're interested, you're not going to want to miss it. Let's get right into it. Here's Greg and Josh Carey from July 21, 2015. Best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. Come on, let's go. Uh, Josh, uh, Yoder Smokers, are you, uh, are you like the owner, creator of Yoder Smokers or what? All right, so uh, let me give you a quick rundown. Yep. Uh, family's been in manufacturing for 31 years. We've manufactured all sorts of stuff, including horizontal directional drilling equipment. There may be one person listening who knows what that is. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a the, tunnel thing, that, right? Yeah, so that's the stuff that puts, that puts uh, communications infrastructure, oil pipeline, anything you want into the ground. And so we've done that for a long time. And back in 2007, uh, we decided to start building smokers. We have a lineage that goes back to the original Oklahoma Joes. So we have... Our designs, especially the original, the Cheyenne, the Wichita, the Kingman, those offset pits especially, have a lineage to Oklahoma Joe's, and that's kind of where we came from. And uh, we then launched a line of pellet cookers in 2010 or 11. I want to say 11. I, I could be wrong. It was toward the end of the year. It's, it's been a while. It feels, uh, feels like a long time. But yeah, we, uh, we launched into pellet cookers. Of course, we build flat top charcoal grills. So... Um, I am family, so parents own it. I'm the pit master, one half of one half of the YS competition cook team, and uh, and so we we travel around. We don't get to cook as much as we want, but then also we own uh, all things barbecue in Wichita, Kansas. So we also own a retailer um, that sells barbecue supplies. We're the largest Yoda retailer, yada yada yada. And so um, that's uh, that's the that's the short version right there. Now you said you. You have is it a take on Oklahoma Joe or you are making the Oklahoma Joe pits and is it no, like a, a no so yes yeah, so what what we did all right so Joe Phillips yep. who uh, who is our designer he uh-huh. uh, he worked for Oklahoma Joe's for years uh, designed pits for them and uh, and actually built several jigs there was a for anybody who knows the the history of that brand and, and being bought out by Brinkman and then having the name sent over, you know, they they import Chinese pits. You can find an Oklahoma Joe's in a Academy Sports or Lowe's or whatever you have around you. And they're they're not the same thing, right? It's an offset pit Ugh. that that is it's, it's a char griller or whatever. Um Joe had had taken some of those designs and ideas and kind of sat on them. He came and worked with us uh from the other side uh, in the horizontal directional drilling. And he had really tweaked, made some changes to the pit, changed the size diameter of fireboxes, changed airflow, designed new heat management plates. Uh, we designed a new heat management system uh, in house, which you'll find in our Kingman competition pits, like the Cimarron. And uh, so we we took what uh, what is kind of a traditional offset. Joe's being, I would say, the largest manufacturer of traditional offsets there ever was. When that company was at its full full bore in the '90s, they were they were manufacturing pits at an outrageous rate. Um, and you still, I mean, you still, if you compete, you run into them all the time on the circuit. And so there are essentially two companies that came out of that. Horizon uh, came out much yep. earlier. Yep. Um, we started building pits in in '07. Uh, re- start, well, started building pits earlier. We started com- making them commercially available in 2007. All right. So as we kind of look at, and I have some uh, some screenshots here of uh, of the few pits. This is the Cheyenne. You have Wichita. You have loaded Wichita, Kingman, Durango. Two different types of Durangos and a Stockton. Uh, I guess which. Uh, well, I mean, look at this thing. I'm, so I'm looking at the Stockton right now. You're probably seeing that too, by the way. Yep. Um, this seems like it would be a huge. <clears throat> I say pain in the ass, but it would seem like it would be a huge task to make and and make it operate the way it should and work properly. 
there is there is a ridiculous amount of engineering that goes into building a pit. Look how many shelves are in that thing for crying out loud. <laughs> yeah, Holy if, moly. If, if you're running a restaurant, man, that's your that's your dream. And of course, we build a dual door version of that. Um, we build a ton of custom pits. I mean, you you look at any of our stock pits and go, hey, I need this. And and we're one of those guys that we we jump at the chance to manufacture something different, um, something custom for somebody. But yeah, they're understanding the airflow, being able to model that. We have engineers and modeling software, and we we really take a long time on the R and D side to uh, to make sure that everything's going to perform properly. But then, <laughs> the scrapyard man, we build and build and build when we R and D, and we go, no, that that doesn't perform to what we want, and so we we will start over once we collect enough data. You know, we've got a computer system and eight or 10 scientific probes running through it. And we want to know exactly what the airflow is. How's this thing working? What can we do better? And we tune that pit from the start um, so that it operates as, as absolutely as well as it can out of the, out of the box as, as it were in this case off of the pallet. So Josh Carey joining me here on the show, talking about Yoder smokers, the website, YoderSmokers.com if you want to check it out. If you're uh, not on the video side here, I'm trying to show as many as I can here while we're talking. Um, Josh, let me ask you about this. It's easy, as you had mentioned a couple minutes ago, what you see now under Oklahoma is kind of like a POS that you can get anywhere else. You would refer to Char Griller, which I think is one of the biggest POSs out there on the market today. But right. if you look at on your website, I mean, these things, uh, for instance, this Kingman, you know, we're, you're approaching three thousand dollars. The Cheyenne, which I'm guessing is more of a, an entry level, is still nine hundred dollars. And to me, when I talk to people about offsets, and I was on a, a local radio show a couple weeks ago, and uh, I said, you know, if if you're one of those guys that's just getting into barbecue and you make that uh, terrible decision to go into a Home Depot or a Lowe's or wherever the hell you're going to go and spend two hundred fifty dollars for something that looks really cool. And operates mm-hmm. horrifically inefficient. And by the time you fire it up and you realize there's no fire management that's actually going to take place except horrific food being produced. And now you might be turned off to barbecue. It's a horrific experience. It's going to be a great yeah. looking flower holder at best or a boat anchor. Or it's going to end up on your tree lawn and the guys overnight are going to take it and melt it down for scrap. You need to be paying $900 or $1,500 or something along the lines to make sure that the quality is still there. The fit and finish is going to be there, but most importantly, that the performance is going to be there so you can enjoy everything, right? There's, there's no doubt. You know, it's one of the things we <laughs> operating a, uh, operating a retail store as well. We have a staff chef, um, who, who cooks every single day at our store in Wichita cooks on uh, many a Yoder. The first Yoder ever built is a loaded Wichita. And of course, serial number one sits on our patio and we still fire it up from time to time. And, uh, you know, we cook and cook and cook. And that's one of the things when people come to us, we want them, we want to make sure that they're going to get something that's going to cook what they want, going to cook well, and they're not going to have to go online and go find mods for their new, <laughs> for yep. their new grill. That's one of the, you know, you see the char griller mods or the Oklahoma Joe's or, or whatever the, the brand slapped on it is. It really doesn't matter. And you've got guys putting ducting down to the right to the grate to make it more level. And they're trying to put fire brick in the bottom. And, you know, by the time you've spent the time and energy and effort and the money, you spend another couple hundred bucks and I don't know what anybody else's time's worth, but my time is worth more than trying to mod something to make it cook well. I want to be cooking. I want something that's going to last, going to cook well and going to cook for a long time. All of the stick burners, all of the offsets have lifetime burnout warranties. The reason they have a lifetime burnout warranty is because you're not going to burn them out. If you do, you're, that's impressive. Um, and uh, we'll replace it so that it's it's not going anywhere. It's something you're going to pass down. It's it's a heritage, right? It's 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 the classics never go out of style. You're going to hand that thing down to your kid, you know, or or you're going to sell it for really great return. I mean, that they hold their value incredibly well. You're going to sell it to upgrade to something bigger or different. You know, you, you may get bored, but it will never stop working for you. And that's that's the big thing is we create a product that's going to last forever. And that's and and from the get go, you know, we have a lot of guys say, you know, what was your first smoker? And and I always tell people, you'd be surprised how many people's first pit was a couple grand because they took the time, they saved up, they did their research, they found what they wanted, they spent the money, and they enjoy cooking more than just about anybody else. The best moments of the barbecue central show in ten minutes or less. Come on, let's go.
Josh, when you look at building the pit, um, and I mentioned I had Ben Lang on a couple weeks ago as we started mm-hmm. the kind of foray into getting pit builders on here each and every week to, to go over their products. Uh, he has a, a different design than, than you guys have or a lot of guys have where you have the firebox on one side, you have the smokestack on the other. His are both on the same side. It's kind of been right. nicknamed reverse flow, this or that, and the other thing. Uh, why do you do yours, uh, I guess, the more traditional way? And are there features, benefits, differences, or anything like that as far as where the stack is in relation to a, a Lang or a Yoders or a, a Close or, you know, the, the list goes on of great manufacturers? Absolutely. We would say, sorry, I'm texting my wife here too, all my messengers up because she's sure. calling me. I'm saying, hey, I'm, I'm on the radio. Leave me alone. Because <laughs> um, I'm at my office. If you could tell, this is probably, this is not my home, right? Um, because they took the time, they saved up, they did their research, they found what they wanted, they spent the money, and they enjoy cooking more than just about anybody else. Josh, when you look at building the pit, um, and I mentioned I had Ben Lang on a couple weeks ago as we started mm-hmm. the kind of foray into getting pit builders on here each and every week to, to go over their products. Uh, he has a, a different design than, than you guys have or a lot of guys have where you have the firebox on one side, you have the smokestack on the other. His are both on the same side. It's kind of been right. nicknamed reverse flow, this or that, and the other thing. Uh, why do you do yours, uh, I guess, the more traditional way? And are there features, benefits, differences, or anything like that as far as where the stack is in relation to a, a Lang or a Yoders or a, a Close or, you know, the, the list goes on of great manufacturers? Absolutely. We would say, sorry, I'm texting my wife here too, all my messengers up because she's sure. calling me. I'm saying, hey, I'm, I'm on the radio. Leave me alone. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm at my office. If you could tell, this is probably, this is not my home, right? Um, yeah, we, we went with a very traditional design for a reason. Um, one, I said it earlier, it's a catchphrase I like. I say the classics never go out of style. Yep. If you're ever around our office, you also hear data beats opinion a lot. Um, but uh, we, we went with a design that we knew and, and we're airflow people. We want the least volatile airflow possible. We want to go from one side to the other without making a hard, a hard 180 turn. Um, it's doable. You can build a pit like that. I know a lot of guys who cook on Langs um, and, uh, and do very, very well, you know, both in the backyard and the competition circuit, and there's certainly nothing wrong with it. Uh, but we took the time to tune the pit right to left to where you're about dead even. Uh, the smaller the pit, the more volatile it's going to be, right? right. So the 16-inch Cheyenne the better pit master is going to want to run that because the the smaller tube is going to be more volatile. But as you get up to a 20 and a 24 inch, it really starts to sing at 24 and 26 inches. Um, it, it becomes very, very easy to manage airflow from one side to the other without incurring any, any new design costs. You know, we, we have a heat management system that you'll find in our competition pits that has a pullout baffle. So you can actually tune if you want it a little hotter on the firebox side, we'll allow that. And for guys who cook, you know, competition in one pit and you want chicken in one place and you need that to be 300 degrees, but you need your, your other food to be 225 or 250. It'll allow for that variance in your, in your chamber. Um, And we really like, I mean, you'll find that most companies between us, Jambo, um, Gator, and you know, what is it? Pits, pits and spits. Yeah, pits and spits. There's yeah. so, yeah, yeah. so many companies out there. Um, most of us build a traditional offset. And, uh, and I think it's a design that's timeless, that cooks incredibly well and, um, and needs very little, you know, very little understanding needs, needs to happen before someone to go, I build a fire here, heat and smoke come through the chamber, exit out the stack, learn my pit, cook some great food and, and move on. As far as the build goes and in the, in the internal and in the guts and stuff as we're looking at shelves and uh, where the fire is actually built, uh, how, do you, how does your pit uh, benefit the owner going forward? Oh, man. <laughs> well, we've got, uh, I, I would say we've got the best welders and the best team in the industry. And so I, I think the build quality in our pits is second to none. Uh, if, if you've lifted a door, take a look at our welds. You know, we don't grind our welds down. I always, I always joke with guys. Um, if you're grinding your welds, it means they're ugly. Yeah. And uh, so if you're trying to hide your welds and make it look all slick, I, it's not much of a pit. But, man, I, Tony, um, who does a lot of our customs are big pits. If, if guys out there, you own a Yoder and you look above the firebox side on the wall, you'll see a TS on there of Tony. Tony did it. I think he's probably one of the best welders around. Um, I, you know, the pits, I, it's, it's tough to say how they benefit, man. They, they cook incredibly well. 
Um, I'll, I'll tell you a story. I started here uh, when I stopped being an audio engineer day to day. I was a vegetarian three years ago, right? <laughs> All right so now I'm an award winning pit master. Um, and, and these pits make my life really, really easy. Um, I start a fire, they cook, I toss a log on every hour. And, uh, and they just maintain and they run. They're quarter-inch steel. They're all virgin. We're not reusing material. You know, they're, uh, they're, they're a fantastically built and really well-engineered product. I mean, where the firebox sits and where the, uh, where the stack exits and everything, that is, uh, that is engineered to make the pit cook as well as possible. So one thing, you put our pit next to somebody else's. They may look very similar, but you start looking at where different companies are putting things, where they're putting grates, where the fire is entering. You'll see that we're all doing something a little different, and we feel that we've really hit on something that's uh, that's quite incredible. All right, so let me show you a picture here. I have um, the – is it the Cimarron? Yeah, Cimarron. Yes. Absolutely. So Cimarron. Yeah. So you have your, uh, grill, uh, your uh, cooking grates. And then underneath it, you have like perforated plates. Are those like uh, tuning plates, if you will? Right. So they have that system. So that's actually a system that we built and designed in-house. To my knowledge, nobody builds anything like it. And so on the right-hand side of there, you can see a baffle handle um, right there. And so that baffle right there pulls out. And so what that allows you to do is in its standard kind of closed, you're going to get pretty dang even. Um, but you're actually going to get slightly warmer on your left-hand side away from the fire pot. And so what you're doing is you're pushing that hot air to the left and making it cooler. Uh, sorry, I say fire pot because I'm so used to talking about pellet grills right. with people because that's our best-selling it's our best selling models of the firebox. Um, but as you open that baffle a little bit, about three-quarter an inch to an inch, you start to get dead even. And you open it more, and now you've got really, really high heat over there. And so that allows for – a dead even pit if you want it, but it also allows the pit master to say, Hey, I, I want some variation here. I want to be able to change something up. And what you don't have to do is move plates around or do anything that's going to alter how the pit cooks next time. You simply just open and close a baffle. And so that system is, it's really quite incredible. We've put it in our YS 1500, which is a pellet cooker, um, the Cimarron, um, the old Kingman comp cart, which we turned into the Cimarron because it was, it was, uh, people wanted a slightly larger pit. And so we went with the 26 inch barrel there. Uh, which is really popular on the comp circuit. So, Josh Carey joining me here on the show. Yoder's Smokers is uh, the place to go, yodersmokers.com. And there he is, Josh Carey from Yoder Smoker. A lot of good information in that segment. There's still a lot more information from Josh. Head on over to the bbqcentralshow.com. Hit the archive button at the top of the page. Search in Josh Carey or... July 21, 2015. It'll take you right to that episode. A lot of great information about the Yoder pellet cookers. Very interesting indeed. Definitely something different in the industry, in my opinion, and worth checking out. Until next time, on the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less, I'm your host, John Solberg, and I will talk to you soon. The best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. Come on, let's go.